because I needed to check the mic. But the mic should be good now. We should be good to go. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be willing because I just didn't know I forgot to get my copy. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. okay, if you want to grab it, I'll, um, so we got to assign roles here. Uh, can I just take this off? Yeah, um, yeah, that can just go off and go in the sink. Oh, wait, no, 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 you press it all the way down. Push it all the way down and then pour it through there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. It keeps everything down. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're getting coffee. Okay. It takes three. <laughs> well, I've never used that thing before. I'm just using the fish Okay, so I'll I'll opt in to be the narrator. So we're on we're on Genesis 25. Genesis chapter 25. Mom, you still with us? Yes, I am. Do you want to be Rebecca? No more. Sure. All right. Bryce, do you want to be God? I usually enjoy that. I've learned. Thought you would. Uh, Darren, you want to be Jacob? Sure. All right. And then Raquel, do you want to be Esau? Yeah. Okay. Okay, get started. So, um, Annette Mercer, uh, Sean's wife, asked me, but what is that video that he keeps shooting? And I had to explain to him it was the Bible study we do on live. Yeah, and uh, I started another live video. We're rolling actually right now. So, um, she should be able to watch it if she wants. Is that? Oh, thanks, man. Wasn't even gonna have a cup. Here. Oh, you weren't gonna have one. No, no that's I'm why I didn't. Thanks, here. Yeah, I honestly, I didn't even like make it. Like I just grabbed one. Kim sat down. Thanks for making it. <laughs> it's not alcohol. Again. Um. <laughs> so let's let's get started. I'll be uh, off to everybody for their. Oh, do you get it, Brad? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you know, we did. well, let's get started. So wait a minute, what happened to Darren? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's in a food coma. Food coma. <laughs> Asked out, face down. I've been in those before. <laughs> <laughs> at George's birthday party? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much food. <laughs> <laughs> that we can believe. <laughs> yeah, or any time you go to like Olive Garden or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Genesis 25, verse 1. Abraham, oh, well, let's recap what happened before this. Does anybody remember? No, I don't remember. Let me, uh, let me see. I read... Abraham sent his servant to go look for a wife for his son, and Sarah passed away. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. See, it does help to role play. It helps me, anyway. Yeah, do you, you remember your role? That's what I'm summing it up as. I don't remember everything else. That's what I remember about it. Sarah passed away, yeah. and Abraham sent his servant to look for a wife for his son. I don't remember her name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically, his son got a wife, and so now he became he could die in peace. Yeah. And that's that's where, where we're at. Um, there's a couple, if you want to back read, there's a couple other events that happened before that led up to it. But basically, uh, Abraham had uh, more, more children, and uh, let me pull up a graphic here of the line of Abraham. Right before he died, he took another oh, wife. I was like, uh, I yeah. Um, so uh, we have Abraham's line through Isaac is the Jews, through Hagar are the largely the Arabs that have settled around Israel. Um, and interesting that his firstborn had 12 sons that became great nations, but
but that was not God's original blessing, but he blessed me anyway. And then the Jewish line had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. And then on the right, right before he died, he took a wife named Keturah, and she had six, which was like exactly half of 12, which is like a half blessing. Who took another wife? Abraham? Abraham, yeah, oh. after Sarah died. Um, and they uh, didn't really say anything about them. Whatever happened to the servant and the other servant? That, that's Hagar and Ishmael, and, oh, okay. and yeah, and, and they, their lineage can largely be traced back to the um, Arabs that are surrounding that area. We also have a map which I posted online, which on the Salem Bible Study Group. If everybody wants to check it out, it's uh, it is uh, this now the land of Ur right here. It's real near the right near the Garden of Eden. Um, kind of down here. That's as far as he traveled. Um, and uh, anyway, he kind of ends up settling up in here, and then his wife is buried in Haran, and we're about to read that he was as well. So let's go back to the text. I think it was Haran. Yeah, yeah know about that. Okay, so Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him... Zimram, Jokshan, Midian, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Letushites, and the Leomites. The son of Midian were Ephah, Ephur, or Ephah, Ephur, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived 125 years, then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre in the field of Ephron, son of Zahor the Hittite. The field of Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then near li lived near Beer Lahai Roy. And we can see. Hmm, it's just basically in the Middle East. Just It's a lot colder up here in these mountains. Um, we get snow. The Himalayas to the northeast. Um, Turkey is up here. Um, but it's still pretty darn, pretty warm, um, and they're they're north of Jerusalem. Um, okay, this is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Ishmael, picking up in twenty five twelve, whom Sarah's slave Hagar, the Egyptian, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the son of Ishmael, sons of Ishmael, listed in the order of their birth: Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael; Kadar, at, at Abil, Mibsam, Misha, Mishma, Duma, Mesa, Hadad, Tama, Jetur, Nefish, and Kedama. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Ishmael lived 137 years. He breathed his last and died. He was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area from Havela to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt as you go toward Ashur. And they lived in hostility towards all the tribes related to them. And that is true to this day. Um, like in the Six Day War, when Egypt and the surrounding areas, some of his descendants I were reading settled in Jordan, southern Jordan. The Jordan Knights, Egypt, and all the nations attack. And it's kind of been a conflict. That's why it's a world hotspot conflict zone. can can uh, be traced back to that hostility um, so we can see again through Abraham's sin, there's still a generational thing going on. Um, and, and it's, it has a lot to do with, there's a lot of people and not a lot of land and it's, it's like a trade gateway. So everybody wants that. And not only that, but Israel's got this awesome coast and God made natural springs come up from the ground with water Israel. And then the desert, you know, water's life costs, costs a lot to run pipes out to the cities. So, um, Everybody wants Jerusalem. That's why there's like the Palestinians, the Jews, and then and all, all the 
all the other uh, Arabs and Muslims have it as their holy one. But, but yeah. Um, so where were we? So this is the account and the family line of Abraham, son Isaac, which is now the Jews. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. Kind of like the Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled within her, and she said, Why would you think me? So she went to inquire of the Lord why it was happening, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Nice. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau, which means hairy. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob, which means grabs the heel in Hebrew. Um, Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up. <laughs> yeah, I know. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country. While Jacob was content to just stay at home in the tents, Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, however, he loved Esau, but Rebekah, his wife, loved Jacob. No, not, not his wife. Rebekah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebekah's wife loved Jacob. Um, Isaac's wife, Rebekah, loved Jacob. Okay. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came from in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob... <clears throat> Wait, let me have some of the red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. And that's a footnote. Oh, that is why he was called Edom. Yeah. Oh, Edom means red. Huh. Okay. Um, oh. We're on 31. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I have one of those footnotes, too. Okay. Um, Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die. Esau said, What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling him his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Dun, dun, dun. So right there where it says despise, does that mean like you just didn't care about it? Well, it was kind of like he wanted it, but he couldn't have it, so now he's mad at it. It's kind of like the same reason I'm uh, tending to get angry now. is because um, I'm working really hard to... Regain. I just got healthy again. I'm working really hard to regain a good, steady income, but it's, it's more difficult this time around, and it, it was a lot easier before. And so, because I lost that, because I hurt myself, um, it's it's. I have a tendency to be mad at it. You know, like it was so easy before, and then you know, it's it's really an insecurity thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's just it's it's. He knows it's good. He wants it's good, but he's letting it get to him. Yes, I let that get to me. Um, but uh, yeah, um, and 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 notice uh, also that the heart. You know, it's all about the people's heart. That gives us a good cue into Esau, like how he is as a person. Um, when you when somebody despises what is good, it often means that Satan's working on them and they're falling into that trap. Um, now there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine in Abraham's time, Jerome 26 1. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, We're on. Do, not go, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land, for 
uh, for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all of these lands and will confirm this, uh, confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make you, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, um, and so now we have, actually we have different roles now. I can be a, let's see, Darren, did you want to be Isaac? Sure. Oh, cool. Um, so when men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Because he was afraid to say, she is my wife. He thought, the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca, because she is beautiful. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, Because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might well have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people. Anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in the land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord had blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Out of jealousy. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You have become too powerful for, for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar, where he settled. Isaac reopened his wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled with those of Isaac and said, uh, Mom, did you want to be the herders? Sure. Okay. The, the water is first. So he named the well Esek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also, so he named it Sitnah. Get confused by quarreling. Uh, he moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehabah, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. And Rehabah means... Um, oh, Esek means dispute, Sitnah means opposition, Rehabah means room. Okay. From there, he went over to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Mm -hmm. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar, the, uh, who's a, a personal advisor and fickle, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me, since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, um, and I can be them, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, There ought to be a sworn agreement between us between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you, that you will do us no harm, just as we did you no harm, but you always treated always treated you well and sent you away peacefully, and now you are blessed by the Lord. So Isaac made them a feast, and they ate and drank, 
And early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they went away peacefully. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, um, am I the servant? I'll do. We found water. He called it Sheba. Which means... Oath. Um, and to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba, which means seven oaths. Um, when Esau was, oh, and seven also typically means complete, like a complete oath. Uh, when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and also Basimeth, daughter of Elon the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. That was Esau's, yeah. Esau's the very unliked man in the family. Um, so before we get going in 27, which is the last chapter we're going to do tonight, can I divvy out roles again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I can still be the narrator. Darren, you want to still be Rebe- or Isaac? Yeah. All right. Mom, do you still want to be Rebecca? Or Oh, the mix. Um, do you want to still be Isha? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then uh, Bryce, did you want to be Jacob? Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, Genesis 27.1. When Isaac was old and his eyes were weak, so weak that he could no longer see. I'm sorry, this is like my favorite chapter. One of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament. Right? <laughs> Is it? Yeah, this is this is awesome. This is like when the drama, like talk about a sitcom. This is people make money off of, of sitcoms like this. This is awesome. I'd love to film this. Um, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, the hairy one, and said to him, um, "My son." Here I am. He answered. Isaac said. I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Mm. Now then, get your weapons, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the game, the kind of tasty food I like, and bring it to me. To eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebekah was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. And when Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I referred your to your brother. Bring me some and prepare tasty food to eat, so that I may let me get some food before I die. Now my son will be sent to what I felt. Go out to the camp and bring me two stories one so I can put some tasty food for her and the way he said. Then take it to his father's feet so that he may eat the fish left he died. Hey, Mom? Yes. The, um, the phone is cutting out, so I'm going to reread what you read. Um, okay. But. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to fix my phone before I, I um, do that, but uh, thanks. Uh, okay, so, um, look, I overheard your father say to Brother Esau, bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give your blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat, so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. And, and I'll just take all, over all of uh, Rebecca's parts, Mom. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, But my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I'm a man with smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and he got them and brought them to his mother. 
and she prepared some tasty food, just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with goat skins. I'm, I'm assuming that's the hairy part there. Um, then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father. Yes, my son. He answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success. He replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so that I can help you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went closer to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob. But the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize them for his for hands were hairy like the, those of his brother Esau. So he blessed him. Are you now? Uh, are you really my son Esau? He asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him, and he said, Ah, uh, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of heaven's dew and earth's riches and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and people bow down to you. By Lord, be Lord over your brothers and may the, son, may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, uh, and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it into his father. Then he said to him, My father, sit up and eat some of my game, so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hundred came and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. Mm -hmm. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This. Oh, oh. oh, he has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, Haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him lord over you and have made all of his relatives his servants, and I have sustained. Uh, him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's riches, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw off his yoke from your neck. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. 
When Rebecca was told that her son, older son Esau had said what, what he had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I will send word for you to come back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from the Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. And we can't end in a chapter like that, so. <laughs> Please stay tuned for the commercial. <laughs> okay, and I didn't I didn't prepare roles for this, so I guess we'll just wing it. Um, uh, let's let's read probably the next two chapters and then take a break. Okay. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him. Bryce, did you want to do uh, Isaac? Sure. Cool. Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to a pattern around to the house of your mother's father, Bethel. Take a wife from you for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of people. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you go or where you are now live as an alien. The land gave to Abraham. Then Isaac, then Isaac. Oh, oh, go ahead. Well, then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padan Aram, to the Laban son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was with the mother of Jacob and Esau. Now Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and he sent him to Padan Aram to take a wife from there, and that when he blessed him, he commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padan Aram. Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father, Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nebaioth and the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abram, Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. Um, are we good to, oh, I guess we could just read to the end of the chapter real quick. Um, Jacob left Beersheba, Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord your God, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Sure. Uh, oh, wait, who's Jacob? Do you want to be Jacob, Jim? Yeah. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his hat. He set up a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel, which is also the name of a church in Redding, California. Uh, Bethel means house of God. Um... Though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Cool. And I think we can stop there. Um, 
Okay. Um, so is that a good stopping play? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I think my mom had a dream similar to that one. Oh, yeah? What happened? But it had to do with her going to heaven. Oh, yeah. Like, she, I mean, the stairway and everything was similar. I have to have her tell me the story again because mm -hmm. I love her dreams. Yeah, that'd be a cool dream. Okay. Um, so, any thoughts? Any questions? Well, earlier I thought it was something we've talked before. It's called the life, father, life, son. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to kill me. My wife would be a wolf. <laughs> yeah and uh, I was kind of wondering like they heard of that in that area the people heard of those stories so and his son knew that story pretty well and how how funny that he uh, fell in with that same temptation and then when he's, when he's yeah <laughs> Yeah, ge generational sins are kind of true. Like uh, when I told my dad that I was struggling with anger, he goes, I think you get your anger from me. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I get mine from my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Satan, Satan knows genetics. Mm -hmm. Turn people in a certain way. But yeah, but it also, my dad helps calm me down. He like, he kind of taught me. Do whatever it takes to stay calm. Just close your eyes and do whatever it takes to stay calm. When you're calm, you can solve problems. You can think. And when you're not, you slip in down the slippery slope of anger. It, it just gets worse. It makes it worse for yourself. So, um, Nikki told me that. He goes, every time you get really angry and blow your top, it, you make things worse for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think they get my own hole. And see, you'll you'll gain that wisdom and continue that down. Mm. I think whatever you're going through will help whoever you'll help in the future. Okay. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's this kid. The Lord, uh, he curses up to the third and fourth generation, but he blesses up to the thousand thousands of years of ancestry. To, overcome that <laughs> no no, no I, I, I gave it up to god here we go. he said this too shall pass anger passes just like a dark cloud in the sky thank you the analogy jim carrey um it's cool to watch you uh grow with that too yeah thanks um and i'm saying we're not closer because um we have to go yeah we need to hang out um but yeah you've encouraged me a lot with that too and um so i'll I'll give you a phone call when I'm needing it, too. So. <laughs> One day, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, but his tail isn't bushy until 9. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that, so, that was a chipmunk quote. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was another chipmunk. Nice. Uh, well, uh, any other comments on that? Questions? Um, yeah, before when I've read through this I've read through it multiple times but I always I guess I was always on Esau's side I'm like what why is this brother stealing his blessing I didn't I couldn't I couldn't see it I'm like what? what's going on here but now like <clears throat> like I read through Romans I don't remember the chapter it was in but it you know it's saying God has mercy on whom he has mercy and Reading through that, I can kind of see that uh, Esau is like purposely trying to tick off his parents. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Marrying bad women. Yeah, yeah. It definitely adds solidification to the conclusion we came to a couple weeks ago that God reserves the right to bless whom He blesses, and we see that He tends to bless those who aren't very powerful um, compared to the world standards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> humble. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they ha have good character. That's why he chose Abraham, the smallest nation. He was a weak guy among all the other Egyptians there. 
but he had a really good heart. So God's like, he, God trumps the power of the world by giving power to those who deserve it. And um, he, he allows, allows people to take power that don't deserve it. But when he steps in, and just like King David, just like Abraham, um, just like Jacob, here in this case, he, he, he gives power. Sometimes he just comes in and he directly gives power to people that deserve it. Like my mom's a really good example of that. You still on, Mom? Yep. Okay. Well, I just allow me to admire you for a second. You, you've never been in a <laughs> position like a good management position or a good position um, in the company. You've never been like a CEO or anything, but you have the best heart um, and such good morals. Um, or at least I don't think you've been a CEO before, unless you. <laughs> okay, thanks. But uh, she, wonderful heart, mom. You have a wonderful heart, um, and I think of all the power that I've seen in the world, and uh, just how one day God makes everything right, and God takes note when we're when we have good morals, but we aren't very powerful, and that that He He reserves the right to have compassion on whom He wants to have compassion. He reserves the right to take away blessings on those He wants to take away, but it's predictable. People have good character. He blesses people who don't have good character. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so just because he saw the firstborn mm. doesn't mean he just he just inherits that blessing. Like it's it's up to God, not us. Yes. You summed up that whole argument in Romans. What was that Romans nine? Probably. I can't remember exactly where it was, but Yeah, I think you, you summed it up perfectly right then. That that's what they were saying. We're we're sons of Moses, we don't have to believe in Christ. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, um, you know, yeah, God honors each person according to their deed. And, uh, cool. Uh, do you have any other comments? Yeah. Um, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament, I can't remember what book, I think it was with Gideon. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, but like God was recruiting an army mm -hmm. and, uh, I think, I don't remember who was the leader. I can't remember, but. So they had like, I guess they drafted a lot of people in and they said, all right, if you're too scared to fight, you can leave. And like half of them left oh, or something. And I remember. Maybe he kept saying like, oh, if you this or that, you can leave. And most of them left. And I think like the last thing that they, the last test or whatever that they did was, uh, I think God told them to tell the people to go get, get a drink out of the river. Yeah. And there was guys that used their hands and cut the water out, and then there was guys that like licked it like a like a dog. Yeah, licked the water like that. And yeah, God told them to keep the guys that licked it like a dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I had a funny explanation of that, and it stuck with me ever since. I was in the middle of basic training, um, you know, and people's moods are down because they just load load stuff on you, they pile stress on you, and it's really hard. And it was like early in the morning. I was on Sand Hill in Fort Benning, and the sun was coming up over the beautiful Georgia trees. And this, these three, uh, I think it was like a captain, uh, but top brass came. They visited us, and they bring out this big podium, and they have them stand up, and they give their spiel to us new recruits. And he was like, he gave that story about the story of getting, and he was like, God chose not the not the guys who were lazy and threw down their spirit, but he chose the guys that stood watch, you know, and came and lapped down the water, and at the same time looking out. And we had to practice that in basic training, too. Oh, really? Yeah, we had to. Oh, we hated it. We just wanted to eat, but he was like, "No, you're gonna, you're gonna form a circle. You're gonna eat like infantrymen." We formed a circle. We all were facing out, so we had 360 degrees uh, coverage. And we ate with a rifle in our hand and an MRE in the other one. We did all of it in the prone while looking out over the sights of our rifles. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Why did you do that? Yeah, yeah. It was one of the most uncomfortable meals I've had. But uh, <laughs> but his point was like. God weeded out the weak warriors, and he. Uh, yeah. I thought he like saved the the weakest warriors that, and that he he gave them the strength to wipe out whatever nation it was. Yeah, that's how I always read it too. Um, but um, I don't know, though. I, it's been a while since I read it. Yeah, uh, but I like the way you put it that he honors those who are working hard, and you know have a good heart, and it and kind of it kind of fits the with what we're talking about. Um, you know, and he went through each one of the, the cutting down of men and how they were being better soldiers. But his point was be a good soldier. And of course, we wanted to be good soldiers. 
Yeah. I mean, you can soldier if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep your eyes peeled. And... <laughs> you need a taste of cracker. I heard that, like, even if you fall asleep, like, while on duty, like, on watch, you like, go to jail or something, or prison, or you get prison time or something. I remember my dad was talking about that. It's, it's an exaggeration. He's, but... like, oh, he, he's like, watching, and if he gets caught, like, falling asleep, he'd get in, like, hurt some, yeah. in some, uh, Pretty deep trouble. You just hear the back of uh, the vocal cords of a drill sergeant when that happens. But on training, that's what the training is for. They pick the guy. They're looking for weaknesses. So the guys who are falling asleep and aren't taking it seriously, they'll make them do extra watch duty until they get it right. Mm -hmm. And um, things like that. But it's tough because you only get about seven hours of sleep and you're running around all day. So you need that sleep. An hour of watch, like the 6 a.m. shift or the 5 a.m. shift is the worst. Because you sleep from like 9 to, uh, my military time, the 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. shift is the worst. Because uh, you'll get like five hours of sleep, you do your 3 a.m. watch, and then you're like, sweet, I have an hour till we all get up and get going. And you lay back down and you're like, I'm missing two hours of sleep, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> then you get up and you go through the day and you're tired as heck and you're like, oh, I made it. But um Survive. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it's a it's definitely a, a training ground. It's a test, um, and um, you have to be mentally tough. Yeah, yeah, mentally and physically tough, and that's what they do. They they mentally toughen you up, um, and but even so, within that situation, we know the soldiers that are trying, and just like God knows how to bless the ones of his, his children, of his that are trying. Um, yeah, it was good. I, could, I wouldn't do it again, but. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd understand them when they're yelling. I'd be like, say it again, I don't understand you. <laughs> yeah, well, what happens after a while, you build such a thick shell around you because you know you're not going to be harmed, that when somebody yells, and even to this day when they yell at me, I might be shocked a little at first because I haven't heard it in a bit. Naturally, thin skin, thinner skin than a lot of the other guys I was with. Regardless, you just kind of eventually just go, okay, what do you want? You know, you're yelling at me. You're emotional for a reason. I don't like it, but you're act. If somebody yells at you full blown, they're not harming you. They want something. No, but I meant like understand like their words. Like I wouldn't understand oh, what they were yelling. It's pretty easy. It's like ten loudspeakers cranked up to a thousand, <laughs> and you're like, I can hear every detail now. <laughs> I think I yelled at yesterday. Oh yeah, what happened? Just with my journeyman. I just didn't understand what he was trying to tell me to do. Oh yeah. So he like flipped out a little <laughs> bit. But he's not that. He's not as bad as the guys that I work with at Intel. Mm. He like he'll he'll get pretty like ticked off at me, but then he'll cool off pretty quick. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, that's what they do too. You know, they get it out. You can tell. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't deserve it, but at the same time, you can also tell that they're under stress because they're trying to get things done, and you just don't know what to do. And they expect you to know what to do, and they're sleep deprived, and they're in charge of everybody. And the guy, right, the soldier right before him, just tried to run away, and you had to deal with that. So you're on the chopping board. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's good. They they get it out, they get it over it, and then calm. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. They make better friends afterwards because of it. Because you're like, oh. mm -hmm. and then your like, anger is not that bad. The guy at Intel was he was just always mad like all the time, mm. constantly. When he was normally talking to me, it was just yelling. I was like, what the heck? My eardrums were ringing. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, Maybe he was going to be hard hearing. Okay. He couldn't hear himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble controlling the fire on my voice. Yeah, but then again, my dad is, my dad is soft-spoken when he's when he has the hearing aid. He talks quietly. I think he'd be talking about it. Yeah, and in jobs like that, you can kind of run on anger. You know, you pay for it at the end of the day, and you pay for it over time. It shortens your life, but um, you know, you're working with tools that require strength, and you may not feel like doing it if you get angry. Yeah, I can yeah, see that. Anger but, takes a lot out of you. you know, I like what your dad told you about anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, any other questions? Um, I, I hope I'm glad to hear that relationship with COVID. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that you're working with better guys now. Oh yeah, these guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. 
So is the one that got mad at you, is he the same one that we just prayed for? No. Wait. You which said, one that got mad at me? You said co-worker. And then you said... Which one? I was talking about two of them. I don't know. The one that, yells at, <laughs> that was yelling at me all the time, or the guy that just... He, like, oh, gets one, mad. Oh, the current goes, one. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Cool. Actually, I got one more thing to add. Yeah, it's kind of off topic, but it's um, somewhere in Corinthians, I believe. Just a scripture that really comforted me, because I know, like, in my workplace, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I know that. Oh, because you knew. Not because you're not sharp. You're very smart. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. After I've been there for a while, but right now I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely. Like, but right now I know I'm like, yeah, I'm not the sharpest. Say you are. Just say out loud. I Were you sharp, sharp to me? Uh, you told me to do to build something. I'll build it with my utmost. You know more Thank than you. the new guy, right? Hmm? You know more than the new guy. The newer people. Yeah. Yeah, but like I have like other bad habits. Like I overthink things and. I think they they might even learn faster than me. That's I think that's my weak spot is I learn slower. That's why he was yelling at me. Yeah, and your confidence. Yeah. yeah, and I think that um, I do really bad in those jobs too because I think of why. I'm always thinking why, and I'm always thinking of theory and the purpose behind it. And I'm trying to reach out my brain into what I don't know to try and piece things together. You might be overthinking it because you have excess mental energy where the other guys they just shut down their brain and do it might want to go home <laughs> yeah. and go to bed. You know that but um yeah I, I I wouldn't dog yourself for that. I mean that's how you go up in the ladder. But um but anyway yeah it's just rough right now. But the scripture that comforted me it says uh what does it say? It says knowledge puffs up but love builds up. Mm. I was like, wow. I really like that. Mm. Yeah. What is that knowledge puffs up? Well, let's, let's look at it. Do you remember where it's at? Oh, wait. Pretty close just... to the beginning of Corinthians. I have a computer. Puff up like... <laughs> yes, you do. Puff up like you're prideful <laughs> about yourself. Yeah, it really does. You're full of yourself? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, yeah, and having get, gotten a degree and getting out and, and learning so much and learning all the science and learning all this stuff, it took me a quick minute to go, I know a lot about a lot of things now, but it doesn't mean I'm better than anybody. It just means that I've studied a lot. Can I underline something in the Bible? Yeah. Your Bible now. First, First Corinthians 1 okay. 8. Solomon said that in Proverbs. Oh, okay. I thought it. Look, it looked, oh, Solomon said it too? Or the one that I, I was it, talking about? It's, it's a New Testament quote. The New Testament writers are quoting right there. the Word of God. It's, uh, so yeah, in 1 Corinthians 1 8. No, it's part of one, yeah. Knowledge puffs up, but loves. Build up. We all possess knowledge. But right there, he the context, he was talking about how. Like, if you have a, a friend and he's a weak believer, he believes that, like, if he certain foods that he eats is a sin. Yeah. Then it says, and you know that it's not a sin. Um, you know, you know, oh, it's not a sin if I eat meat. But if you eat meat around him, it, it like, yeah, it causes your friend to fall into sin because you're, yes, you're basically, I guess, puffing yourself up. Like, oh, I know it's not wrong, so. Yeah, like, like for example, when you're on staff at a church and you're all eating together at a restaurant, you don't drink alcohol. Because if, if I drink alcohol, people around that are going to see, and some people that's going to trip them up, you know. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. so so if you know that already, if you know something's going to tick your friend off, um, <laughs> you, you want to err on the side of love. Love them. Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't try and be like, well, I know it's not really that big of a deal, so I'm going to... I'm gonna drink it anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not out of love. Um, yeah, and bear bear the infirmities of others is what mm. is how it said or something like that. Yeah, um, it's just how Christ bore ours. Yeah, and here the uh, um, yeah, and so, and so um, what he's doing is uh, 
they're they're preaching to the Jews and the Jews can't eat pork because it's a dirty animal and they had a lot of bacteria back in Leviticus and back in back in those days. Um, but those who had Christ, they were kind of breaking through from the Jewish law. They were eating pork in front of other Jews, and it was causing them to stumble, and they couldn't minister Christ to them anymore. So, so they decided to just, you know, for that sake. And Paul, Paul even says, for, like the Gentiles will become like a Gentile, like the Jews will become like a Jew, like this person will become like that. And he tries to win people over by, okay, I can, I'm, I'm strong enough to live according to your game to uh, win you over in your heart. In the same way that you do things according to the way that your boss your boss wants not because sometimes not even because it's the best way to do it though uh, you just um you know that's how he likes it and you're waiting until you get your chance to do things your own way mm -hmm. and then it goes on to say that uh like blesses he who who uh doesn't who's like their conscience is clear but like if you condemn yourself in your in your mind of something that you're doing then you're sinning because it's not of faith anymore no. yeah. yeah yeah that's good do you uh do best do what uh is on your conscience to the best of your ability and then God will kind of correct your conscience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's how God corrected me about cussing, too. Oh, yeah. Um, you let it go for a couple of years, and then eventually he was like, I don't like when you cuss. And I was like, oh, I've been cussing for years. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, 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 it, it was all right. We had a discussion of that, too. What's that? I said, I think you and I had a discussion about that, too. Oh, yeah? I can't imagine you even cussing. Yeah, I or mad. <laughs> yeah, I would. I I do have an anger side, and I do cuss, unfortunately. I hate that. M Mom, did you have any <laughs> other comments? Are you still with us? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm still listening. Oh, okay. Jane, do you have any other comments? Good. No. Nope. Okay. My well, Darren, did you have any more? Um. Not at the moment. Okay. Rock? No, I think I was I think I was remembering something like Darren was talking about how the the friend with the um causing the other friend to fall or whatever. My mm -hmm. friend when I was going to the Spanish church, she said I can't exactly remember everything that she said, but she was saying um if you hang out or if you if you hang out with those who are causing you to fail like the ones that aren't doing what we were doing in the church then slowly i'd start leaving like start falling mm. out also if i was hanging out with those kinds of people well, that's a good friend and uh eventually i did leave that church because it was too um it was too it had too many rules too many things mm. but it, but that's not the only reason i left i also left because my kids didn't have anything there for them like uh there's nothing in english oh. <laughs> and there is no children's there's the children were allowed to run around the church that's a big thing to whatever people so, churches <laughs> for so, that yeah. a lot but i felt guilty visiting afterwards because when I left, a lot of people left eventually, left that church, including mm -hmm. the pastors. No, oh, well, so, I don't feel guilty about that. You're just doing what's best for your kids. Yeah, I know. But, like, it that just came back to me later. And I was like, well, could I have been the one that caused, like, them leaving? Like, because I left and then, I don't know. Oh, yeah. But that was just a, yeah. Yeah, it sounded sound like guilt. Yeah. It sounded like it a, guilt, a satanic but, guilt, but. But I was you know. hanging out with people who weren't, who weren't um, helping me stick to it? They were they were confirming that I should go to a different church because of my kids and because of like, and I felt like I needed that church mm -hmm. because that church is what helped me get closer to God in a way. And then I was like, okay, well I dealt with me. Now it's time to help my kids mm. because I couldn't I couldn't.
couldn't do it at the same time. I'm that one woman who doesn't multitask. There, no, <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. I think you need to get everything right all the way for one thing and then move on. Yeah, so that I could help them fully and, and then understand what I've learned so that I could teach my kids, like, yeah. without being all confused and be like, oh, well, I don't even know what I learned, so here you go, kids, so I can confuse them. Like, they were little <laughs> and they didn't understand anything that they came to that church. They didn't even like going there. The only thing I liked about it was that they were allowed to like run around. <laughs> yeah. They didn't get in trouble running around. Nice. I think you, you know. But it. Give yourself credit. You you do multitask a lot. Yeah. <laughs> with, but, uh, with my mind, but not with like physical like stuff like working. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I think, I'm a little ADD when it comes to cleaning my apartment. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, if if it's any encouragement, I just think that's. Because when you have a lot of stress on you all the time, you can only do one thing. And if, if you know that that's all you can do well, then you do that well first. And, but I, I've seen you when you're not as stressed out, you get a whole bunch of things done. And then I'm seeing you're laying on the bread with a headache or something. And I'm like, where'd that come from? <laughs> help, help me in ministry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any other comments? Is there anything? No. Bryce, did you think of anything? Any other comments? Not really about the scripture. I was just curious about something totally different, and that is, where's the brownies? Oh, <laughs> right? Right? That's what I said as I walked in the <laughs> <door>. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't make any this time, but he owes me yeah. dessert, so I assumed... I, I'll make you a candlelight dessert soon. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> um, did you have any comments or call? <laughs> no, that was what I had on my mind when Darren was sharing that. So. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I got to, I did some more background study, and I'm doing a little catch up from the chapters before. But on names, we went over Hebrew names, and they were very important. They were kind of like our titles. Uh, I gave you a title. I think I wrote it down. I gave you a Jewish name. It's like show an example. I keep forgetting he wasn't here last week because it feels like oh last gosh. week was the week that he was we're gonna, here. We're going to come to you next time. We can drive out to Dallas and have a Bible study. Oh, we, yeah. should. <laughs> we should. We should. That would be awesome. So I named you, so an example of Hebrew names, I gave you the name Asher, which means happily blessed. I like that name. And it's kind of like a lifetime title. You live up to it, but you're joyous. You just left alone. Nobody will come around the corner. You'll be smiling about something mm -hmm. really happy and always joyous and always make me joyous. So. Aaron can't oh. smile. Asher, your name would be Asher in Hebrew. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm. It's better than George's mid Middle Eastern name for me. Hassan. Hassan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Filipino, man. Back up. <laughs> and then he named my brother Asib. Uh, see, yeah. <laughs> like, he calls us the. He wants to buy us those shemogs, you know, and they call us anti ISIS fighters. He wants me to buy an AK, too. <laughs> that guy's got a plan for everybody. Yeah. I've been to hang out with him too long. <laughs> so uh, I went and I looked up the name of Jesus. Uh, it's actually Yeshua in Hebrew. Um, and it comes from the word, which the name Joshua, which was Yehoshua in Hebrew. Um, so Yeshua came from Yehoshua, um, and Yehoshua is Joshua, which means God, God is salvation and God provides. And so it was a common name at the time. It was like our Joshua now. Um, but it still means the same thing. When, you, when we name our children Joshua, it means God, God will provide. And this children represents how God provides for me and my family through this child. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way, Jesus fulfills that. Another thing, Jesus fulfilled... Abraham's covenant that all nations will be blessed through Abraham um, and, and, and every nation has uh, through Christ and through the global church. And that's still, it's still, we're still fulfilling Abraham's, we are the seed of Abraham now through Christ. Um, so just want to connect the Old and New Testament, which I know you already dove into the New Testament, you already have that stuff ready. Um, the descendants of Ishmael and a lot of Arabic Muslims trace their lineage back to Ishmael. Uh, the Six-Day War is a good example. 
of uh, different, uh, the lineage is very well known in the Middle East, the difference between Jews and uh, Arabs, Jews and Muslims. Um, okay, so, um, and then the only other thing, besides, that was really, really awesome. Thanks, guys, for reading that chapter. Um, it's cool to have the different characters and roles. Um, the only other thing I had was when Israel is exiled, um, meaning that the nation that, you know, that they were forming now in Abraham's time, um, it's because their purpose of being morally good but physically weak um, doesn't stand. So they internally aren't morally good anymore. God withdraws the, his undeserved overblessing to the nation of Israel. He withdraws it. And what is left is just a, just the nation of Israel. And that's what they are right now. They're just the nation of Israel. But there's like, they're kind of building, picking up that steam with carrying over God's blessings and becoming a light of the world, light of the nations. Um, again, uh, really exciting to see them come back. Um but right now we, um, we understand that we partake in the same blessing that Israel is partaking in by being Christian and believing in Christ, God's Son. Um, and then other nations easily overcome Israel when they forsake God. But when they believe in God, they are strong and they withstand other nations. Again, the six-day war is really cool. Um, Christ fulfills Abraham's blessings to other nations, which was Israel's original purpose to bless other nations. The church receives the blessings of Abraham by receiving the Spirit of God, to trusting in Jesus and Christ as the Messiah, and therefore blesses all other nations. And that's the role of the church now. And we see, uh, we see the same thing in churches. A church isn't very powerful. Um, and as a minister, I'm not very powerful. Um, ministers in general aren't very powerful. They don't own a lot of guns. You know, they don't have a lot of money. Um, minus the Vatican, thank God. Um, but... They're internally good, you know. They're a place of moral sanctity, and people go there when they're broken. They go to the church. Um, when a church doesn't follow God and they get off, unfortunately, they too lose that blessing, and they become something else. Like, see, day, like Day Spring and Kaiser kind of just disseminated once um, the pastor left, and there was this drama within the church, and so there's something moral going on in the church, and as a result, it the the, just the people got left. You're seeing the same thing in the Mars Hills Church. Uh, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Um, Mark Driscoll got caught um, uh, with uh, not being financially. Um, he was using resources and um, he was moving them around. And, and anyway, it was uh, in, in the news. And that, that church, my friend who was a part of that church, he, he saw it break up and like the church kind of disseminated. But the good news is that there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant when a church loses its blessing. Um, and we can do this too personally. Um, God can withdraw his over-blessing on our lives. We may have to struggle through some things we didn't want to struggle. Um, but it says, for God's name's sake, he restores churches. He restore, he's restoring Israel. He will continue to restore them um, to their original purpose and blessing. Um, but it just struck me very odd how efficient God is and how purposeful he is. When he gives us a blessing, like when he blesses us with a bunch of money, it's because he wants us to bless others with it. And when we stop doing it, there's no reason for God to continue blessing us. Um, we are his investment and his children, and he wants us. And so he's like, well, if you don't want to bless other people with your money, then there's another Issue, there's other more important issues. So let me take the money away and we'll work on our relationship, you know, relationship with God being the most important. And then once that's intact, we'll restore the money. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, my application for all these chapters is continue to seek good morals and good attributes and to be good. Continue to seek goodness and don't seek money, don't seek power in particular, because those are gifts from God after the morals are in place. And it's really hard. Sometimes I really don't feel like doing that. But but it, it, it really does pay off. Uh, you know, a nice guy doesn't finish last. The nice guy finishes sometimes at all. The mean guy doesn't even finish at all. He might get ahead at first, but eventually I'll catch up to him. So, um, and... Just like the tortoise and the hay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you kick the rabbit. 
Um, so God blesses us uh, in proportion. He always takes care of us in what we need. When he withdraws our blessing, don't freak out. He will continue to bless. You know, we might have to slim down and tighten our belts, but he'll continue to bless because he loves us. And he withdraws his over blessing. It doesn't mean he doesn't withdraw his blessing. Like when I couldn't work, I was freaking out. Um, but the Lord taught me that he's still sustaining me. He may have gotten rid of some over blessing, you know, like being in the service. That's okay. He, I still am being blessed. I'm blessed every day. I wake up and I'm blessed. You know, I'm in middle class America. I have smartphones. I can, you know, I can travel around the world, all around anywhere in the U.S. and know where I am by this magic little square. Um, mm -hmm. Never be lost. You know, and we're we're so blessed. So don't lose heart when um, he refines us in that way, um, because he always does restore us. Um, and then he continues his undeserved overblessing to us. And we'll see that um, in, in Jacob. Uh, when we read on next, we see the, the cool blessings that God has in, um, uh, for Jacob. But uh, yeah, um, and recently I've been kind of feeling like, God, where are you? I'm not as blessed. But the truth is, is that if God's teaching me something by not blessing me something, um, the truth is that I really am still blessed. I'm just not as blessed as I was. And so I have a tendency to go like, what did I do? What can I do? Well, it's time to just work on character. Like you say, I can't wait to see what God does through character when I suffer through things. Mm -hmm. And that was actually great encouragement. So. Yeah, I'm actually glad that my ankle got injured because yeah. I know that's part of God's plan. Yeah. And just everything that I'm able to do right now, my ankle the way it is, that's the strength that God's given me. So if he wants me to do something, he'll give me the strength to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing I tell with the driving Uber and Lyft, I'm like, okay, God, if you want to give me the strength, you'll give it to me. And yesterday when I went to drive before our worship set, he didn't give me the strength. And I was driving and I was like, oh, my head hurts. Like, really, what's going on? And then I realized... Oh, I asked you not to give me strength when you don't want me to do something. I get the picture. I'll stop driving. <laughs> and then I took one other ride and it hurt. But um, but uh, yeah. He's a dick. <laughs> um, it's pretty fun. I love meeting the people. Um, but um, yeah, it was. It took me a quick minute not to lose heart when I don't lose a when I lose a portion. Not lose a blessing, but when God delays His blessing. Anyway. Yeah, that's cool about your ankle. How is the ankle doing? Is it getting better? Uh, I think it. I think now it's just kind of the same. Yeah. So I think it just kind of stays the same now. No, okay. I'll probably go to my next follow up. I'll probably go there and be like, yeah, it's it's the same, and see what the doctor says. <laughs> Takes a long time, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. I can't wait till you get back in that gym, man. <laughs> I'll have to go. My ankles healed up too. My head's starting to have to go flip around. And... Wait, your ankles hurting? Yeah, it hurt for a couple of years. Oh. Yeah, set, almost the same exact injury. In fact, uh, I was nice to have. I'm glad that you hurt your ankle <laughs> so that I could relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, everything that happens happens for a reason. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, that. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. I guess we can close in pray, prayer unless, Bryce, Mom, do you have anything else to add? Oh, uh, the comments were probably really good. Hmm. Um, I was thinking that oftentimes the protecting that comes from the Lord mm -hmm. is not monetary at all. Yeah. But if you are going to painful yeah. it's a time for character built, yeah. which is much valuable than anything else. That's true. We take our character with us, um, but we don't take our money. That's cool. Yeah, that's true. If I had it my way, I'd have both. Oh, well, I think <laughs> I'm that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very true. The internal comes first and the external. And that's how God likes his people. Internally good first. And you know, people like Mother 
Teresa dying on the same day that Princess Diana died. No coincidence there. A prince of the a prince a spiritual prince of the world who we didn't see all the goodness of um, passed away, and she's now in heaven with all of her riches for all the good that she's done. She, she never really got repaid for that um, and left a legacy there. And then Princess Diana was a prince, a prince, literal, physical prince of this world. Um, I don't know. Um, of course, I assume she had a great character as well. Um, um, everybody loved her and was hurt for her too. Um, but we don't know. We don't know the insides until after death where God does reward us according to what we have and, and uh, materials are only a, a, a test and a trust like Rick Warren said in his Saddleback Church, life is a test and a trust. So, yeah, thanks, Mom. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'll close in prayer. God, we thank you for your word. Um, thank you that we can learn about how you wanted to bless us now and how, how you have blessed us now through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I uh, thank you for your leading us of your word. And thank you for leading us. And when we really don't feel like to be led, God, you do lead us through, uh, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, oh, fear no evil, for you're with me. Uh, you comfort me with your arm and your staff, God. You prepare tables before us in the presence of our enemies and our our cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow us all the days of our life. We will dwell in your house forever, God. We thank you for that and your promises and your word, which is so awesome and lovely. Thank you for everyone here that's joining me, God. Um, we uh, we give to you all of uh, our struggles, our hurts, and our pains. We lift that up. And we thank you for your undeserved blessing. You've blessed us before. You're with us blessing us now, and you'll bless us in the future. Um, we pray that um, I pray that everyone has a good week and everyone is um, blessed. Um, you keep everyone safe and protected. We thank you for Facebook Live and everyone on there, God. We pray that everyone is blessed there as well, God. Um, we thank you for your undeserved blessing and, and may we be like uh, Jacob um, and and not like Esau. And may we have good hearts and uh, be blessed because of that. And uh, we know that you record each person according to their deed. And we thank you for your son. We thank you for belief and faith in him and, and the, just the purity in that. Um, we pray that you'd give us a good time with your word next week. Um, and we pray that we could uh, bless others and evangelize as we go and continue to fight the good fight, fight to finish the race, which we have called heavenward in you, God. Um, yes. Um, and please lead us on always. May your spirit be with us. Please bless us and keep us safe. In your name, amen. 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 Cut the live feed. Oh, man, we, we started a, a savings account to upgrade our camera and get a tripod and stuff. And so I put all donations on my music page. I'm just going to forward them to the account. We eventually probably will get a web page and get a PayPal donation button. Um, until then, the donation button is on that page, and yeah, we have like thirty-one dollars, and really, yeah, I was just gonna add a couple bucks at a time. You know, maybe in the next year we can get a nice sixty-dollar camera, get an HD camera, so everybody in Facebook land can watch. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Little guess. Bye. No, you got quite a few.